Hey what's up guys, I'm gonna Xero and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make a working loading bar in Unity. So let's say for example you're loading into a scene and you want to show the progress of loading into that scene. Well in today's tutorial I'm gonna be teaching you how to do that. So if you guys do enjoy this tutorial or you do find it helpful and you learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more and let's get right into it. So as you guys can see here, I am in a completely new scene with only a main camera and directional light in my hierarchy. And uh, what we're going to be using this scene for is we're going to be working on the UI, we're going to be adding in a loading bar, and then we're also going to be adding in a button so then when we press the button, the loading bar will appear and then our new scene will load in and that progress will be shown on the loading bar. Alright, so first up what we're going to do is we're going to go game object, UI, slider, and we're going to get out a slider. Now, what I suggest you guys do now is you go into your game view so then you can actually see the UI and how it will look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my slider, so just make sure you have your slider selected. And then I'm going to change the position of it so then it's in the middle of the screen. So now what you want to do is on your hierarchy, go to your slider, click this drop down arrow here, and then you'll see a thing here called the handle slide area. What you want to do is you want to disable this since we won't need it. Usually what the handle is used for is it's used so then we can actually uh, manipulate the slider's value. So let's say for example we want to set like audio volume and you want to change your audio volume, that's usually what that's used for. But we won't be needing that today. So now what you want to do is you want to click on your main slider and then here we'll have the slider component. So all this stuff here you don't really need to worry about, you don't need to edit any of this. Um, but make sure your min and max value are set to 0 and 1. And then as you can see here you can actually manipulate the value of the slider but again you don't really need to do this, just make sure you keep that at 0. I'm just showing you guys this so then you know a bit more about how the slider works. So something else as well that you can do is um, you can actually change the background color of the slider. So I'm going to change the background color to black so then we can easily see when it loads. And then I'm going to change the filling of the slider to red. So if you just click on this drop down arrow on the fill area and then you go to fill, you can actually change the uh, filling color of the slider as well. So I'm going to change this to green, like a very bright fluoro like green. Alrighty, so there we have our loading bar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the width and height of this just so then it's more bigger and we can easily see it. And there we go. So that there is our loading bar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable this since this doesn't need to be active right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a button. So I'm going to go game object, UI, and then button. Now you can get button text mesh pro or you can go legacy and then just get a regular old button. Usually I'll, I like to use the legacy button, so you can use either. It doesn't matter if you use a text mesh pro one or a legacy one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this in the middle of my screen. And boom, now we have our button. So you can change a bunch of stuff to do with your button, including its width and height if you want to. I'm going to make mine a bit, bit bigger. And then uh, you have your button settings here, you don't really need to worry about this. Well, you will need to a bit later on, but not right now. Now, if you go to your hierarchy on your button, if you click on the drop down arrow, you should find your text here. So now you can actually change the font size of your text, you can change what it says. So with this, I'm just going to make it say start, because when we press this button, it will start loading into the scene. And then I'm going to change the text color to just completely black going to make it a bit bold and there we go so that there's my button now you don't need to disable this keep this active on your scene so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new c sharp script so we're going to go create c sharp script and then i'm just going to call this uh, start scene all right so now you want to open up your script Alright, so in the script what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to start off by getting rid of the starter stuff here. And then we're going to start entering some variables. So first up we're going to get a public slider variable. 
called loading slider. Now this variable will be for our loading slider, of course, because it's called loading slider. So what else could it be for? And then we're going to have a public string variable called scene name. So what this is going to be used for is the scene's name that you want your uh, scene to load into. And then there's going to be a public game object variable, and this will be for the uh, the start button because after we press the start button, it's going to disable and the loading slider is going to enable. So that's why we're going to be getting a variable for that. Now we've just got two more variables. Uh, one is called loading. Now this doesn't need to be public. Uh, so what this is, is it's a bool and bools are used for uh, if something equals to true or false. So once we press the start button and the game starts loading, loading will equal to true. And then our last variable will be a thing called async operation. And I'm just going to call this async op for short. So what this is going to be used for is it's going to be used to get the progress of our loading, which will be applied to the loading slider. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go public void, and then we're going to call this start game. So what this void is going to be used for is it's going to be used for our button. So when we press the button, then this function, uh, whatever... Uh, is within this uh, void will happen when we press the start button. So what will happen is our loading slider will enable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go loading slider dot game object dot set active true. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to go async op equals scene manager dot load scene async and then we're going to go scene name so the reason as to why async op will equal to scene manager dot load scene async scene name is so then it can actually get the progress of the loading and then underneath that we're going to go loading equals true and then last but not least the start button will disable so we're going to go start button dot set active false. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into an update void. So we're going to go void update and then we're going to go if loading equals to true and then we're going to go loading slider dot value equals to async op dot progress. So yeah as I said before the async operation basically gets the uh the progress of the loading so what's going to happen is our loading sliders value will equal to whatever the progress is of that loading and then if async op dot progress is over or equal to it could be over or equal to 0.99f then what will happen is we'll go async op dot allow scene activation equals true. So what this does is when the progress of the loading is basically at 0.99%, meaning 99%, then the scene is allowed to activate. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the script. Oh, and a few more things to add as well is up the top of your script, you want to add using Unity, using Unity, oops, oh, sorry, using Unity Engine uh, dot UI and using Unity Engine dot scene management and boom there we go and yeah that's pretty much the script there all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the scene so just click back onto unity of course and uh, also make sure you press ctrl s to uh, save your script as well when you're in your script make sure to press ctrl s to save your script and then you can go back into your scene and then yeah Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply this script into our scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to my canvas. So just go apply that. And then now you want to fill in your variables. So we're going to go fill in the slider variable with my loading slider. And then the scene name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load into the, uh, we'll try Slender uh, 1. We'll go into the scene called Slender 1. We'll see how uh, that does. And then we'll apply this button to the start button variable here 
and there we go. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is you want to click on your button, and then you want to scroll down to this section where it says on click, and then you want to press plus, and then you want to drag in, so as you can see here we've got an empty game object variable, you want to drag in your object which contains the scene we, I mean the script we just made, so for example my canvas object contains the uh, script we just made, so I'm going to drag that into this empty variable here. And then you want to click on this uh, drop down tab that says no function, and then you want to go down to your scene name, so as you can see I've got start scene, since that scene is attached to that object. And then you want to click on the start game uh, public void. So then when we click this button, that function we did before, the start game void, that will then happen. Alrighty, so now that that's all done, uh, how about we test this out and see how everything all looks. Hopefully everything turns out alright. Actually wait, there is one more thing that we need to do. <laughs> yes guys, one more thing. So what you want to do is you want to go File, Build Settings. And then in your game's uh, build settings, you want to make sure that your scenes that you have involved with the loading are actually in this, uh, are in this section here, the scenes in build section. So for example, um, what you want to do is in, if the current scene you're currently in, so for example, I'm currently in the loading scene, if you notice that that's not in your um, scenes in build, what you want to do is you want to click this button that says add open scenes and then it'll automatically add the scene that you're in. And then also make sure that any other scene that you want to load into is in your build as well. So for example I want to load into my slender one scene so I'm going to drag that into here so then that is in the scenes in build. So yeah, so now these scenes can actually be loaded into. And yeah, so now that is the final thing, now we can actually test this out. And boom, as you just guys, as you guys would have just saw, the loading happened. So let's do that again. As you could all see, that was pretty quick, but that's because there's not really much going on in that scene. Plus, I am using an SSD as well. But let's do that again. And boom, the loading was very quick. But as you guys just saw, there was the loading. And yeah, guys. Well and yeah guys, so that there is how you make a loading bar, a working loading bar in Unity. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And uh, yeah. Also guys, my game Bodie and Friends is coming out in a couple days. So if you haven't wishlisted it yet, be sure to. It would mean a lot. Uh, the game is going to be coming out very, very soon, only a couple days now. In fact, it's coming out the same day as Gartner Band Band 4, I think, or just around the time when that's coming out. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, do enjoy that game if you do end up playing it. I was working on it for a year, and, you know, I started working on it when I was a lot less experienced. However, I've learned a lot over time from working on it, and, you know, I'm very confident that my next projects are going to be, like, uh, a lot better than that. Anyways guys, I'll see you all soon, and bye bye